They're appreciative of, of my service. Seems like very much so. Well, he hasn't paid for his breakfast in years. This post falls tradition has spread across the country. Everyone just wanting to pay for this veteran's meal. It was a nice mild today here in the inland northwest, tracking a few showers overnight, but I think more mild to warm weather is coming our way. I'll have your forecast next. And reality owes her life to a tiny medical device, but it's who's behind that medical device that makes this story so special. I was part of something that now is part of Anne. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Hi everyone, I'm Jane McCarthy. Washington State University College Republicans hosted a rally on the Pullman campus today. It was called Build the Wall, Build the Wall, Bill of Rights. In 2016, they held a similar rally which drew hundreds of people. And so here is a look back at that. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Let us fill our hearts not with unwarranted, unjustified, disproportionate fear. But let us fill our hearts with love. At the time, WSU's college Republicans say they built the Donald Trump-inspired wall as a way to show support for the then-presidential candidate. Well, today's rally was much smaller and much calmer. Crem 2's Amanda Rowley joins us live from Pullman now with how today played out. Amanda? Yeah, good evening. Well, when we got to Glen Terrell Mall, we expected to find a border wall here, but uh, we didn't find one. The WSU College Republicans say that wasn't their plan to put one up today. They did invite right wing activist Joey Gibson with Patriot Prayer and Matt Marshall representing Washington State 3% to speak at this First and Second Amendment demonstration rally. Now we talked to those two men as well as the counter protesters and students who attended this rally. They kind of mingled back and forth between these steps here at Todd Hall and the Cub. Hear what they had to say today. Immigrants are welcome here. No hate, no fear. Immigrants are welcome here. Look, the wall's not up again. They've been saying since February they're going to put it up um, and it's not happening. We're not actually here to talk about any sort of uh, you know, border security or illegal immigration issues, which makes it a little bit ironic, all the, all the signs that are around here. We're primarily concerned with the First Amendment and the Second Amendment related issues in the state of Washington. Your rights are birthrights regardless of where you're born. It does not matter what country you're born in. We are the immigrants. We are the immigrants. The mighty, mighty immigrants. Immigration, we need to have legal immigration, we need to streamline it, but we need to know who's coming in this country. We just wanted to show unity in our community, not just our Latinx community, but our entire multicultural student community. Yeah! Right now! I truly believe that like, we need to crack down on gun enforcement and gun reform, and that's just the way it is. And that's the whole reason we're here, is to educate people about the Bill of Rights and about the laws that we currently do have. We have a free speech ball rolling down the uh, cobblestone right now. We're going to go ahead and let you write little messages on it for free speech. Now the rally wrapped up a little earlier than anticipated, but I stepped inside actually headed into the Cub halfway through today and some of that chanting you could hear from the inside of the library as well as the Cub. But other than the chanting and, and those potentially heated debates, uh, it was pretty relatively a calm rally. Now, as you saw, the rally wrapped up with a giant beach ball where folks could sign whatever they wanted on the beach ball as a demonstration of freedom of speech. Reporting in Pullman, Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. Hundreds of people marched through Paris this evening, a day after a massive fire destroyed parts of the Notre Dame Cathedral. The roof and the spire are gone, but the structure itself was left relatively intact. Crime News Whitney Ward is following this story for us tonight. She joins us live in the studio with the latest plans to rebuild now. Whitney? That's right. Good evening. The French president says he wants to see the landmark rebuilt within five years. And some experts say, though, it could actually take decades. So let's take a look inside at the damage more than two thirds of the roof was destroyed. The iconic spire at the top of the cathedral also gone. Firefighters did manage though to save the cathedral's landmark towers, but it doesn't end there. So call it luck, good timing or divine intervention, but 16 religious statues had just been removed from around the spire on Friday. They would have been destroyed when that spire collapsed into the flames yesterday, but today they are being stored in a safe place.
As for the treasured rose windows, authorities say they too are safe. A photographer for the Associated Press took this picture today, and you can see firefighters inspecting each individual pane of those windows. Late today, the cultural minister said all three of the famed rose windows did manage to avoid catastrophic damage. Now, this is not the end, of course, for Notre Dame. French President Emmanuel Macron did promise to rebuild the cathedral, as we said, within five years. And now he is turning to the world for help to restore the landmark. Already, a lot of people have stepped up. At last check, more than $700 million in donations has already poured in, most of it coming from some of the richest families in France. President Trump also offered up his assistance. As for the fire, investigators are still searching for the cause. They have ruled out arson and terrorism, and they believe it was just a terrible accident, likely the result of an ongoing renovation that had been taking place at that cathedral. Mark, Jane. Whitney, thank you very much. Well, Gonzaga University is taking on sexual abuse in the church. In a letter to students and staff, school president Thane McCullough says the school is forming a commission to address the clergy sex abuse crisis. Late last year, a report from the Center for Investigative Reporting claimed priests accused of sexually abusing women and children were allowed to retire on campus at the Cardinal Bea House. In the letter, McCullough added, the commission will be dedicated to what happened on campus, along with broader systematic, systemic rather, sexual abuse. The university declined to comment any further. Meantime, people in western Washington lined Interstate 5 for a procession for a deputy killed in the line of duty this weekend. Cowlitz County Deputy Justin DeRosier was shot while responding to a call about a disabled motorhome Saturday. The following night, the suspect was involved in another incident with officers where the suspect was shot and killed. Deputy DeRosier previously worked for the Whitman County Sheriff's Office and graduated from WSU. Also, several businesses now raising money for Deputy DeRosier's family. This coffee shop in Kelso, Washington is collecting donations at all four of its locations. The hope is the extra money will help his wife and their baby daughter. Nothing can replace another human being, but we just hope that even if we can do something to take away financial worry, even for a little while, it will definitely be worth it. And owners of coffee shops hope to raise at least $10,000. As for the official memorial, that is still in the planning stages. Cowlitz County is working with U.S. Bank to set up an account where the community can donate. All right, joining Tom here in the Weather Center, a cloudy, cool start today, but by midweek, that can change. It could be a bit warmer. Yeah, I'm looking for temperatures to hit 60 tomorrow, maybe mid to upper 60s later on in the work week. We're at 52 right now, Mark, and 52 in Coeur d'Alene. Deer Park right checks, uh, checks in at 54 degrees. We do have some 60s, though, out towards Moses Lake, Wenatchee, and Omak. When we take a look at the forecast over the next 12 hours, it looks pretty good. You can see temperatures uh, remaining in the 40s. I do think there's a chance of us getting, it's not showing up on the model, but we might get a scattered shower or a passing shower uh, between, like, say, 1 and 4 o'clock early in the morning hours. So we'll look for an overnight low of 40 and then 60. The expected high tomorrow will start out with clouds, but become partly cloudy by late morning and into the afternoon hours. I always look ahead to the weekend and this is a special one. This is Easter weekend 60 on Saturday, mostly sunny on Easter Sunday and a daytime high of 61. The rest of your seven day forecast is just minutes away. Sounds good, Tom. Thank you very much. Well, you could call it free breakfast for life. A restaurant in Post Falls has a unique tradition for one of its oldest customers. Just about every day for the last four years, Dan Rankin, a World War II veteran, has had breakfast at the restaurant called Dueling Irons. Yeah, and over that time, other customers have volunteered to buy his breakfast every day. As Taylor Vito explains, it's become so much a tradition, there's now a line of fellow customers just waiting to pay for the veteran. We all have our favorite breakfast spot. You know, that place where we like the food, the company, and where the staff know how you take your eggs. For many in Post Falls, that place is dueling irons. And when it comes to faithful customers... They have a lot of stories to tell. Look no further than 95-year-old Dan Rankin. They come and ask me, are you ready to eat? If I say yes, what do you want, the usual? That usual, a sausage patty, eggs over easy hash browns, and toast. The same thing close to every day for four years in a row, staff say. But behind that breakfast is an all-American story that's even more classic. We went through a lot of battles 
going all the way across France and Germany. Franken is an Army veteran. He served under General George S. Patton during World War II as a mechanic retrieving tanks. Tried to repair the tanks when the Germans got done shooting, shooting them. The war took Rankin deep into Nazi Germany and even to concentration camps. A life as a mechanic in the inland northwest would follow after the war. And still to this day, many in Post Falls know of Rankin's story. So much so that it's prompted what you could call competitive generosity. Especially on the weekends, people fight over it, whoever gets there first. Staff at Dueling Irons can't pinpoint when it started. But for years, there's been a list of diners waiting to give thanks. Their gesture? buying his breakfast. The restaurant has built up a tab of thankful customers. For years. Um, right now I have $175 on it right now. And just last week, this photo of Rankin shared to a North Idaho Facebook group went viral. That prompted even more generosity from people wanting to thank a veteran. We've gotten calls from Florida, people putting money on it. It's been crazy. I guess it makes you feel like you're recognized. Rankin is grateful, albeit humble, about the gesture. It's clear he doesn't let it go to his head. He likes coming here for the great breakfast, conversation, and people eager to hear stories from the greatest generation. They're, they're appreciative of, of my service. Seems like very much so. In Post Falls, Taylor Vido, Cram 2 News.